Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. Tonight we got a special video. We just hit 400 subscribers. And I really appreciate you all for hanging in there with me. Uh, for those of you who didn't see my short uh, and just noticed the change of scenery, that's because I recently uh, relocated to Utah. I have a new lab that I'm setting up. I'm actually out here for work right now. I haven't quite moved yet. Um, and so today's kind of a special video because I don't have any of my tools or anything with me, but we hit our 400 subscriber mark and Jonathan, who is the 400 subscriber, made a request and I'm gonna make it happen for him. So let's get right into it. We're gonna take a look at the best GPU for $100 or less for the HP G2 800. All right, and here we have our HP 800 G2. This is a small form factor office PC. It's not really known for gaming, but these machines have become the darling of the emulator world because of how cheap they are. I picked this one up for $50, which I think is a great price for what it is. These came out in about 2017, 2018. All right, let's have a look inside, make sure everything's kosher, and then we'll have a look at our GP. Okay, and as expected, we don't have much in the way of RAM and we don't have a drive, but that's okay. I saw that coming. So let's do some upgraded components here. First and foremost, we have our HP SSD S700 SSD. It's a pretty basic SATA drive. I figured since we're using an HP machine, we might as well use HP themed parts. So that's why I decided to get this one. And it was on sale for very cheap on Amazon. All right, and this is HP part number 2 David Papa 99 Alpha Alpha Pound ABC for those of you playing at home. Really nothing special about this drive. We're just gonna go ahead and pop it right in. Looks like. Our friend who sold this to us did include a SEA cable, so that's good. Um, also, I picked up 16 gigs of HP V6 DDR4 3000, I believe. Yes, DDR4 3000. This was about $30, or maybe $32.99. Pretty basic set of RAM here. Once again, sticking with the Hewlett Packard sort of a motif here. This was the best low profile GPU I could find for less than a hundred bucks. It's the NVIDIA Quattro P1000. This is a Pascal Quattro card. It came out in about 2017. In fact, around the same time that this PC came out, I found on the back here, there is an HP serial number. So I've got a feeling that Hewlett Packard had these made specifically to put in this particular machine, maybe a more high up model than this one, but nevertheless. So the P1000, like I said, is from the Pascal family. It shares the same die as the GTX 1050 Ti. Now this is a slightly cut down model from the 1050 Ti. It uses considerably less power. However, the 1050 Ti's, especially the low profile ones, tend to be a little overpriced, if you ask me. I mean, this for $85 or $175, almost $100 more for a 1050 Ti. I'll take this any day, especially if you're trying to save a few bucks which I'd assume we are if our budget for a GP was only $100. Okay, let's go ahead and get the we put on here. All right, so at first boot here, I noticed that our CPU fan is not spinning. I have a CPU fan failure code 900 in the BIOS. So we're gonna have to figure out what's going on there. Hang tight for me, we'll be right back. All right, so it's day two with our HP 800 G2. Just a reminder where we left off, our CPU fan isn't working. Now normally at this stage, I would recommend that you just remove the whole cooler, repaste it, and clean it out. But unfortunately, we're working with limited resources, so we can't do that today. Let's see if we can position this in such a way where it will still do its job. 
yep, that's gonna have to do for now. This is uh, a little janky, admittedly. I don't recommend this at all. <laughs> but uh, we're working with limited resources and that's kind of half the fun. So let's get into it here. Let's go ahead and get our CPU fan plugged in. We're gonna lean that bad boy up against the GPU. That's fine. Now we have a, a CPU fan slash GPU support slash RAM cooler slash VRM cooler. Uh, you may have noticed we're working on the chair here. That's because I don't have any other furniture. So this is a tribute and a call out to my friend, uh, JC Lowcastle there over at Lowcastle Tech. I know I'm kind of copying his style a little bit. It's, it's not on purpose, it's out of necessity. All right, here we have it. It's the world's cheapest gaming setup. I got the chair and table from Walmart along with this Surf brand wireless keyboard and mouse and the world's cheapest brand new 1080p monitor. It was on sale for about $60. I have everything sorted for the machine here. So we've got our i5-8400. It's cooled off by that Noctua fan. Unfortunately, Amazon sent me the wrong size fan and I'm out of time. So we're just going to go with that. We've got our uh, P1000 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gig SSD. I went ahead and installed Windows. Let's go ahead and see how she does. All right, here we are. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get Batasera up and running on this particular machine. That's gonna take some more time, but we'll follow up with that next month when we revisit this and we do a comparison of low form factor GPUs. In the meantime, basically, if it can run Firestrike, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine for emulation. That's my theory anyway. I am far from an expert in that. And unfortunately, we don't really have the system resources to do a proper capture. Um, and I don't have a capture device with me. So we're just gonna do it uh, JC Lowcastle style here and just film the screen. And really, so far, so good. We're hanging right around 30 FPS. That's certainly playable, if just barely. Okay, and here's the final boss here, the combined test. Barely making it above 8 FPS. This is definitely not playable, but then again, I feel like this is probably a little more intense than what the PS3 can do. And let's see our score. Survey says... 49.81. All right, so we're right up there with just about everybody else, although I'd imagine most people are not running 3D Mark on this particular setup. Everything looks to be about within spec, nothing major, nothing works out of line or anything like that. About as good as an office laptop, apparently. So definitely not great. If you're just gonna build about a Sierra box or whatever emulation front end you prefer, I'd say this is gonna play, you know, probably 75 to 80% of the games you might wanna play on that. And to answer your question to my 400th subscriber, uh, what's the best option for less than 100 bucks? I'd say this P1000 is your best option. Unfortunately, the 1050 Ti's are still a little overpriced, especially the low powered ones. They start around 150. Uh, I picked up this P1000 for $80 on eBay that was shipped, so. Well, thank you all so much for watching and thank you for 400 subs once again. I gotta go pack my bags and hop on a plane. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.